that, uh, of course, I'm here to do is to, uh, you know, enlighten you and sell you stuff. And uh, so, uh, you know, part of this enlightenment is, of course, for me to say in front of you that Latronics, over our 31-year history, um, hasn't aspired to be up at the tippy top of broadcast, sea change, you know, loud automation, the same thing that CBS is using. A lot of people aspire, they want to be just like CBS, they want to be just like, we want to be realistic. And so I often talk about the pyramid of, of a marketplace, and up at the tippy top are those few people who can afford it, who have that kind of budget that, you know, that do that type of production. We have to, at some point, kind of admit to ourselves that, look, we don't have those kind of budgets, and we need to look at this both from an economy standpoint and from a, a functionality standpoint. And that's one of the things that I've always tried to drive our company towards is the idea of providing value. That, you know, we, we're not going to tell you that this is going to be 50 megabits. This is one of the things that just blows me away competitively is often um, others will say, yeah, but our server can do 50 megabit video. Well, 5 megabit video in your world is way better because it's not burning 10 times the storage. I mean, storage is in, important to you guys. And 50 megabit is what, the, is what the broadcasters, the CBSs, and that sort of thing uses. And, and certainly, if you can afford it, knock yourself out. But remember that multiplying factor for everything. And so we want to make sure that you get an awesome picture at a decent bit rate. We want to make sure that you get awesome streaming at a decent price. And so one of the things that we've done is we have all of these things. And I'm going to just kind of chunk you through here in a second. And we're going to do a little bit of a show and tell here. So one of our most awesomest customers, especially since he just walked in and is in the back of the room, is Ralph from uh, CTN. And everybody give Ralph a hand because <laughs> without Ralph, we wouldn't be here and we wouldn't be uh, organized and have all this stuff here. And I appreciate uh, you hosting this, Ralph. Um, but one of the things uh, is Ralph is responsible for a lot of volume, a lot of uh, 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 information being disseminated. And uh, one of the things that Ralph had interest in, and as did a number of our customers, um, and something that we've been working on for a while, is that little thing we've been sending around. And so, if you take a look, um, how many of you are, you know, you have streaming, so you know what it is. How many different types in, in big categories of streaming are there? Is streaming streaming? Is streaming just streaming? No? What, what are the big categories? There's live, right, and then on-demand, right? You have live and on-demand, and those are two totally different flavors, okay? Can you go into a live meeting and, and um, fast forward? Not unless you can call them up and tell them to hurry the meeting up, right? <laughs> you know? So there's a couple of things. So Ralph, um, through his entire uh, broadcast facility, and through um, our equipment and our infrastructure, has two city government, I guess one is government, one is city, portals that are streaming. And uh, one's called Gov TV and one's called City TV. So I'm going to show you over here. Underneath the super special blanket there is one of those little things that's floating around that I haven't seen come back yet. Since <laughs> <laughs> someone's back. Oh, yep, there it is. OK, I trust you. So uh, if you take a look, let's go, let's go backwards one on Roku. And you can see, here's Pandora, here's Ann Arbor, here's a Northwestern Michigan College, here's North, Up North Media. Let's go ahead, and this is actually a Roku channel on the Roku system. Just click on Ann Arbor. Uh, here is Government TV Channel 16, and here's City TV. Now those are his two channels. So you come in here, this is On Demand, and this is Live. We come into the On Demand, I didn't hit it, I didn't. And I can come in here. Now, one thing that I want to do a little disclaimer is that the video that you're going to see was designed for what size device, what size of a viewing area. Very good. Now, how many of you have seen on Miami CSI, which I'm blown away by this, but you can take a picture that's about 10 miles away, and you keep zooming in, and you just get more and more clarity, which is way cool, but doesn't happen. All right? you only have that many pixels. So what happens when we take that many pixels that was meant for a computer screen or for our, our you know, phone and put it on a big monitor? It actually looks pretty good. I'm, I'm kind of surprised. 
So here we go. We're actually connecting to our servers through our CDN. And uh, check this out. You have uh, full rewind and fast forward. And you can see the vectoring time is really quick. Uh, we have pause. This is all VOD. We can go backwards. Start up again. And uh, so you get the idea. There's these different folders. I'm going to go backwards. Check this out. Resume plane that keeps track per program where you were on this box. Um, here we are at that program. Uh, I can go back another one. Uh, you can see these different VOC chair briefings, cable communications, city council, uh, commission on disability issues, downtown development authority. So we could vector into there and go and play one of their DDA meetings. So, go ahead. Oh, just a quick question on that. I have the Samsung TV, and I'm assuming this is basically the same thing, but on the Samsung, when you come up to your main menu, you see all the available channels, ESPN, blah, blah, blah. Right. Is that what I'm seeing there? When yeah, what you're seeing, Roku, yeah, what you're seeing is, this would be the equivalent of what you see in your Samsung. Okay, so, so uh, you, if you go through, there's ESPN, there's whatever. Well. I don't know if they have that on Roku or not, but. Yeah. I mean, there's thousands of channels on Roku. You go in, you tell it. There's actually a channel store, and you go in and you put it in there. <coughs> in the case of uh, Ralph, you can actually provide a link to a user. They just click on it and it enables their Roku through your computer. Or you can come in and put the code in in the channel store, and boom, you're all set. I guess my real point is when you're in Los Angeles and you come up with your Roku box, you see Ann Arbor right there. Is that not crazy? You just jumped so far ahead in my presentation that I... I'm very happy. Here's the thing. You saw how small that box is? You got it all customized with your channels and you've got you know, all this stuff. You leave and you go to a hotel in Los Angeles or you know, a Traverse City. Think about it. Boink HDMI, Wi-Fi and power supply, remote, boom. Like, you, know, you can put that in a Ziploc bag. And there you have your entire television experience right there with you. Now, you know, if you're in Traverse City and there's, let's see, Lake Michigan here and Roku TV here, you know, you might want to go for the Lake Michigan thing, but it's an awesome, cool thing. Does that answer kind no, of the I direction? There, I'm talking about if someone other than me buys Roku in Los Angeles, yes. they see Ann Arbor in Los Angeles. <coughs> Absolutely, yeah, it doesn't matter. It's just, it's, it's just anywhere. Right. It is the internet. So it's just like yep. Samsung. Yep. Respect. Yeah, we have... Uh, We've been uh, growing by leaps and bounds. We actually have a, a, a sales office out in uh, San Jose in, in Sunnyvale area. And uh, it's a couple of weird things. Number one, just the way the telephone system works. He just has an extension that goes over the internet that you know you dial 7140 on my phone in Holt, Michigan, and it rings and it's just like we're there. But he also has this Roku technology and logs in and boom, uh, he sees whatever he's configured to do, including Ann Arbor. And it's, it's, so is everybody cool on that and everybody gets it? All right. What kind of download bandwidth do you need to, like, you want to watch Netflix in your hotel room or something? It scales. <laughs> so Netflix knows that there's different bandwidths. And the first thing it does is it goes out and looks at the connectivity that it has. And then it'll pick, in Netflix, those movies are encoded in either three or four different bit rates. And based on your connection speed, it'll pick the one. And it actually will move during the, uh, the, the uh, movie. In the case of Ann Arbor streams here, we're literally tapping that exact same little tiny stream, which is about 300K. So 300K for this kind of content is nothing. Um, and, and admittedly, I'm going to show you here uh, on the live side, 300K uh, has a constraint. Um, so this was meant to be a 320 by 240. This is live on Ralph's channel right now. Not perfect. You can still read the text pretty well. But again, we're doing that Miami CSI thing where we zoomed in, you know, and blew up all the pixels. And uh, so that's live. And then VOD is the same idea. So does the Roku thing make sense? So where else does this fit? Um, Another uh, new addition to Latronics is Ryan. Ryan, if you would uh, uh, show up, uh, stand up, and show yourself off, and also uh, technology-wise, um, he has an iPad that uh, is connected to the Peg Central service. 
Um, and so you can see. Now you can just show them, show them. And then I have my uh, Android device. And right here, this is Ralph's content as well. And so you start to get the whole idea of the connected world where he has the iPad, here's an Android device, there's a Roku. Of course, you have the desktop, which is where this all started. And uh, so having it connected across multiple devices uh, has happened. You know, Electronics has that as part of our standard service. Go ahead. Where's Ralph going to get his operating budget for your uh, That is the slippery slope. It really is. And that, you know, we've now three times said, hey, we've got to be careful of the hand that uh, feeds us relative to the, you know, if you're working purely off of franchise fees and everybody goes over the top, then that franchise fee goes away. And so as much as we all want to do all these nifty, cool things, I know that in some states and some municipalities, the cable companies have put their foot down and said, your franchise fees are not going to fund internet delivery. And go ahead. However, just on that point, I would say since he's also a government channel, uh, making this program ubiquitous over all devices, he's making it more valuable to the government. Exactly. And And, and that's, the, uh, that's the, the final part of that equation, is we, our Latronics, are enjoying incredible success in this area. And, you know, this is a terrible thing to say, but while municipalities are downsizing over here, they value the transparency and the FOIA reduction of costs that this affords them. Because now, instead of having to dig a DVD and copy and all this, you say, here's a link knock yourself out, and that's your FOIA. Um, we're seeing just record sales in this area of people putting streaming video on demand. Now, they're not putting broadcast channels on, you know, our, our classic cable thing, although we're seeing tons of business. Actually, again, last year, record year in that area. But I, I think that people are transitioning so far as the municipalities ponying up their own money out of the general budget. Uh, so. There's still a value. There's still production. There's still all these things around it. And, but we do have to be careful. So one of the things that um, Latronics uh, has developed in recognition of how difficult it is for you guys to do your thing is uh, we've developed a thing called polyoptics. And the whole idea behind polyoptics is for you to be able to, uh, when, when the municipality comes to you and says, hey, um, we want to outfit another meeting room or we want... Uh, can you come and capture, um, you know, video for us? And then you give them a quote and it's too much money for both the equipment up front or for your services. You don't want to lose that video content. You don't want to lose your importance in that role. And so here with Polyoptics, this is a $10,000 list price system that comes with three robotic cameras, a video switcher, and an encoder. Okay? And the whole idea is, is that, and Ryan, if you would please, on an iPad, the city clerk or anyone can actually touch those images and the system will point and zoom and transition the nice uh, dissolve over to that person and you can actually produce the meeting from your iPad. And what happens there is that if you look right down here in this corner, in fact you'll see it, you can preload it with multiple meetings. Like in my township when we have a DDA meeting, everybody sets the same place, you know, the, the curve of the dais is the same. And so we just load DDA, and the people's names, and you can load their pictures here, show up. And then when you do the city council meeting, you just drop in, load city council, and the names show up, and you just touch your way through it. How's the audio work on that? Are you file video? Or? Yep. Yep. Well, it, no, we just take the standard audio feed that was there in 99.9% .9 of the time. So if you take a look here, I'll zoom ahead, and I'm going to delay a little bit, but you can see, so here would be your typical chambers, and you can see that camera has that view, so this is this camera has that view, that camera has this view, that camera has this view, now you can see this is when you hit podium, and it zooms in on the podium, here is that board member, here's that board member, you get the idea, and it's not rocket science, but it's pretty cool, and it feeds our PEG central system, it feeds your broadcast encoders, and this is the unexpected consequence or 
thing that happened that, that we just didn't see. We go into a municipality, and they have their main boardroom, okay? Which they might already have cameras in, or you guys might already be in there producing. Um, that's cool. They, they don't want to change. They just want to leave it alone. But it turns out in that city center, they have five other meeting rooms that they want to record, but they just never had an inexpensive way without manning it, without you know doing these other things. And so we have several customers who have remote sites out here, out here, out here, all feeding back to their broadcast center. Now, what does that do for you as far as your visibility and your necessity? Does that make you less valuable or more value, valuable? Intrinsically, you'd say it would make you more valuable. And so what happens is, is they all feed back to that central broadcast center, and uh, these could be separate municipalities or separate rooms. And then that goes through PEG Central. We have PEG Central Pro, which is the, our authenticated VOD uh, system. And so that's just one way of we're, gonna, we're taking you right from the glass, right from the lens, through to your broadcast center, through to the streaming side. Do you, anybody have any questions on that concept? Go ahead. We can expand. This $10,000 system is three and a CG input for the PowerPoint, a scan converter or something like that. But we're walking before we run. We have this deployed. Actually, people, you know, some meetings they go in and they touch one icon and they walk away. And other meetings they actually produce it. And what you see on the iPad, you can also just run on the desktop. The clerk could actually put in a window on their desktop computer. Yeah. No. Good try. Which one? <laughs>